Welcome to another video. In this video I will show you 13 things I do every time I install Windows 10 on a computer. Let's start. The first thing we are going to do, is to activate our Windows 10. If you previously linked your Windows key to a Microsoft account, you just have to log in with that account and your Windows will be activated automatically. In my case, I am going to just enter my Windows key. Note that if you installed a different version than your key was, Windows will ask you to upgrade to that version. If you can't afford to activate Windows, you will still have a functioning system. The only drawbacks are that, you will get a watermark on the lower right hand corner saying activate windows, and you cannot use anything under personalization, for example, change wallpaper, accent colors, lock screens, etc. Next, we are going to download our GPU drivers. Depending on your graphics card model, you will want to download either NVIDIA drivers or AMD drivers. I will show you how to download both. On the AMD website, you have to choose your graphics card model and click Submit. We are going to choose the Windows 10 option. And click Download. Once the download is finished, click on it and proceed with the installation steps. Let's do the same in case you have an NVIDIA GPU. Again, choose your graphics card model and click on search. Download and proceed with the installation. Next thing, let's make sure our system is fully updated. Let's head to Windows Update, and check if there is any updates available for our PC. Make sure to download and install all the necessary updates. You will also get some optional updates, most of the times will be some drivers updates. Like camera drivers, or microphone or USB. I am going to install everything available. Next, we got this amazing tool which will make your life much easier. I've never used a faster and better search utility. With Everywhere Void Tools you will be able to find any file within seconds, it will save you hours and hours of your time. This tool does only one thing, and it does it amazingly well. The best part, Everywhere Void Tools, is completely free. Next thing we are going to do is to create a schedule for the optimization and defragmentation of our hard drives, so we will never have to do it again manually. There are three options, daily, weekly, and monthly. If you move, download, and delete a lot of files daily on your computer, I recommend setting the option to weekly like I do. If you are just a casual user, set the option to monthly. Make sure to select all your drives. Windows Defender is enough to protect our system, I recommend not installing any other antivirus software on your computer, instead, download and install Malwarebytes, which in my opinion the combination of Windows Defender and Malwarebytes equals to top protection. There is a trial period for the premium edition of Malwarebytes, if you can't afford it. Just keep the free edition after the expiration of premium. Let's go ahead and install it, I will show you some of the settings I use.
Under the Security tab make sure to enable these two options. The, Scan for Rootkits, and, Use Expert System Algorithms to Identify Malicious Files. That's it with the protection of our system. This one is for the people with a lot of email addresses, that wants to keep everything in one place and organized. Mozilla Thunderbird is a free and open source software for those who need a desktop email client, to keep all their emails together and organized. There are more functions on this software, that I am not going to discuss right now because I've never used it. I only use the basic email function and it's working pretty well for me. Once installed, it will ask you to set up your first email address. Most of the times it will automatically find the correct SMTP settings to connect to the server. After you set up your first email, you can go ahead and click on the email option again to add a new one. To avoid any unexpected DLL or DX9 errors in the near future, we are going to download DirectX. Follow my steps. Even if you are not a programmer or a person who writes a lot on his computer, you will find this program really useful. Notepad++ is a free source code editor and notepad replacement that supports several languages. It supports tabbed editing, which allows working with multiple open files in a single window. It's really light and doesn't use a lot of your PC resources. Test it yourself and see if it works for you. The absolute best media player, VLC is a free and open source cross-platform multimedia player that will play almost any audio or video file you throw at it. I've been using it for years and it is never disappointing me, and I never needed anything apart from this software. Very useful program to extract and compress any file. 7-Zip is free software with open source. I haven't read anything sketchy about 7-Zip. In my opinion is faster than WinRAR and since it's an open source I prefer it. Most of the time I use almost all the usual browsers together. Like, Opera, Chrome, Mozilla, all for different things and purposes. Before some time I tested Brave and I found it really interesting. I really like the ads and rewarding system that they use. It's pretty fast, responsive and clean. The only thing I am worried about, is that Brave was placing affiliate links on people browser without their agreement, it's not that I care if they put affiliates on my links and make some money of me. It's more about that I don't know if I can trust them for other things. But on the other hand, almost all the browsers by the years have done sketchy things without us knowing. So choose on your own. I recommend Brave. Or Opera. Or Mozilla. Now that we've done everything, let's do the most important thing. We are going to create a restore point just in case something goes wrong in the future. We can come back at this point, where our Windows is fully working with all our basic software installed. Type system on your search bar and click on it. Next click on system protection. Choose your C drive and click on create. Choose a name for your restore point. I will name it like this so I can remember that everything is working here. After that, click create. Wait for it to finish loading. And you are done. You have a restore point that you can come back anytime if you face any issues in the future. That was the 13 basic things I do every time I install Windows 10 on a computer. 
The next videos will be about how to completely optimize and debloat your Windows 10 machine, and how to optimize your GPU settings for the best performance possible. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing for more content like this. Let me know in the comments what's the first things you do when you install Windows on a computer. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, more videos coming soon.